I think that may have been the worst goal I've seen a Schalke team concede maybe ever. It's beneath despite the Bundesliga level. That goal in particular is just, it's not, it's not okay. Herzlich willkommen zurück auf Schalke America. I'm your host, Richard Carmen. Join me as always, co-host Jack Mangan. Jack, how we doing? Good evening, sir. Doing well. Uh, reveling in the glory of that that new uh, intro uh, sequence there. So uh, well done, sir. Uh, yes, yes. I forgot about it until I hit play. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, how are you other than Schalke? Yeah, I mean that's that's the main thing, right? Other than Schalke, uh, yeah, not 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 a great start to the season for us. We're starting to find ourselves in a uh, dangerous part of the table here. So uh, interested to hear what your thoughts are going to be on the action from this past weekend. Yeah, it was uh, interesting, as to say the least. Um, I definitely, for those who saw it, great. Who those who didn't, I had a little bit of a rant after the game uh, on on our YouTube. So go check it out. It's only like three minutes long, but uh, definitely ranted because I was a little upset about. What the hell we saw defensively? Uh, but I've calmed. I've calmed since. I had a much more composed review of the game afterwards. But uh, yeah, man, it's still having the same old issues, it seems like. And it's, it's really frustrating. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, I mean, we've had some pretty terrible starts um, early in the campaigns over the past few seasons. Uh, you know, I think multiple seasons where we've had, you know, five game losing streaks or something close to that to kick off a campaign. And, uh, you know, we of course started this season on a, on a high note with a, with a five goal victory um, early on, hoping for maybe, uh, you know, the ability to buck that trend uh, to some extent. But it has certainly kind of started to go downhill again early on uh, subsequently. So. Um, yeah, needing to uh, to write this shit quickly. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, so rundown of tonight, we're going to do a recap of the match against Karlsruhe, uh, talk about some injury updates, get some questions, uh, one including Ben Manga, but we'll get into a lot of different little questions here about Schalke and our thoughts on how this is going so far. But uh, let's kick things off with uh, the game that was uh, looking into the lineup in this one. Uh, Carl's were the host uh, in goal. You had Weiss with uh, Jung, Franke, Beifuss, and Gunther. In the back, you had Rapp, Jensen in the holding midfield roles with uh, Brunic, Vanetic with Schlussner, and Ziv Zivadze. Yes, I practiced it for too many times before I got on the podcast here. Um, obviously, for me, I don't know about you, but for me, the main guy I was looking at was uh, ZZ over here, Ziv Zivadze, because he's already got a hat trick this year. He's, he's on a good form, and he is their main goal scoring threat. Um, thoughts on Carl's Ruse lineup in this one? Yeah, I'm mute. <laughs> I certainly, uh, I certainly agree. Um, and I mean, I think we saw that bear out in this game to some extent. A lot of, a lot of chances uh, ended up going through him or him finding his way on the end of them. And uh, just, just a, a kind of a, a big presence there that I think bullied some of our uh, center backs and inexperienced back line a little bit. It did. He did. I think both he and uh, Schlussner really were did a number on our guys and. Um, you know, we started out the game well, but look, before I get into the game, look at our lineup, I guess. We might as well look at our lineup. Um, in goal, obviously, Heckerin, uh, back four of Gatsenbein, Vazinski, Sanchez, and Merkin, mid- holding midfielders of Schell- uh, Schallenberg and Bachmann with Silla, Yunus, Moore, all led by Karaman. Obviously, the two youngsters at the center back position will take the take the headlines here, but also, I mean, Yunus getting his first start uh, for Schalke. Thoughts on the lineup? Yeah, Eunice, obviously, that inclusion uh, in the starting lineup, at least being super notable. Uh, also, Tobias Moore continuing to, you know, kind of hold down the fort on that, like getting a lot of getting a lot of run early into the season. Um, Schallenberg, I think that, you know, the deeper of the two with Bachman getting a little bit further forward in possession, it seemed like, uh, for the most part. And then uh, Wasinski as well. Um, you know, we've talked about, I think you know, he's somebody that Ben Mang has made some comments about. Um, in terms of the acquisitions, um, I believe he's been one of the guys that's been kind of name dropped in some of those comments. And uh, this is the first time we've seen him all year. I don't even think we've seen him in a cameo role prior to, to now that this 90 minute, you know, performance, I think. Right. Because he didn't he didn't sub off. Oh, maybe he did. Sub, uh, he stayed on the entire 90 minutes. Right. Yes, I believe so. So, yeah, these, these are the only minutes he's had all season. So um, that was notable. Uh as well um but yeah super super interesting center back pairing there in sanchez and wasinski man yeah i know for sure they were uh and it's interesting because I, before the game the question was like 
But we have Seguin, we have Thomas Kalas. Thomas Kalas still out. Seguin also being held out just for, for precautionary reasons. They want to extend his injuries. Silla, we weren't sure he was injured during the international break. Didn't go with Molly. Uh, stayed back at Gelson Kirschen. He was able to play in this one. Uh, and Schallenberg moved up from defense to the midfield there. Um, people were wondering about Brian Lasma. He did play in the Nac Breda game, had a really great goal there, but only played like half the game, 50 minutes or so. And so uh, Gerard, before the press conference, said, hey, he's only good for like 30, 35 minutes in this one. Um, so we knew that he would maybe come on as a sub role, if at all. Uh, but yeah, it started out well. Um, it was going to be a difficult game. Karlsruhe were one of the top teams in the league this year so far. And we'd have to – they play well at home. Their, their, their TIFO at home was pretty good as well. The fans were rocking. Um, but started out well, I thought, first 15, 20 minutes. I think Rarks even echoed those comments. Um, and then slowly started seeing Karlsruhe do what Karlsruhe do and sort of put a lot more pressure on Schalke, uh, especially, you know, Zizavadze and, and Schlussner. They've had some, they had some opportunities early on, especially Schlussner. He missed some glorious chances in this game, and he's going to be kicking himself. Uh, if it wasn't for, like, his misses and Hecker and Cena on his head, this game could have been – a blowout, you know, so um, it wasn't really going, I think, very well so far in the first half. Would you agree that I think Schalke started out well, at least in this game? I mean, for a few minutes, but I mean, the first half in general for me was was pretty was pretty poor, and um, outside of a couple like, you know, n nice sequences in, in transition or whatever on the team, I mean, not a whole lot that was offered in the entire first half, and I think we were probably um, a little bit fortunate to uh, hold out as long as we did in the first half before ultimately conceding yeah it kept bending and kept bending and kept bending and finally you know in the 38th 39th minute schlussner hits it off the post you're like oh okay can we get to halftime question the answer was no um ball an innocent looking ball it bounced up looking for ziv zivadze it's bouncing around and there's four or five shaka players in ziv zivadze and he ends up getting the ball. It's like Benny Hill, guys falling around, calamitous. Except for him, he gets the ball and shoots it past Heckerin. Um, joke of defending, to say the least. I'm being it's an understatement. I was obviously much more livid after the game, but uh, really, it's like Mites playing out there. It's really pathetic how they couldn't get the ball. Everyone was everyone had their eyes closed. It looked like we. Um, I mean, as I know, you're well aware. Uh, have had some pretty poor defensive teams over the past few seasons during this sort of down spell in, in Schalke's history. Um, we've seen some pretty bad goals conceded. I think that may have been the worst goal I've seen a Schalke team concede maybe ever, yeah. but certainly within the past few seasons. I mean, just a comedy of errors. I think at least four, possibly five different Schalke players either making contact with the ball or like with a clear opportunity to and whiffing and an inability to clear this thing. I mean, the idea that this fell down, and this is kind of what I'm talking about too, just like also just bullying our back line, like at the end of that, finally bring it down, muscling it, taking a step and cutting it through. It, it is a goal that should never be scored. Um, it's, it's beneath spite the Bundesliga level. Um, it just is. I mean, it's, it's, it's Sunday league kind of stuff. Um, and look, you can be critical of, of Gerard's as much as you want, uh, for the start that we've had this season. And we can talk about that later. I don't know how, you know, how you're feeling about that in general right now, but like that goal, I'm sorry. Like I, I, I can't, I can't justify like looking at the coach for that goal and being like, that's the coach's fault. Like how do you coach against whatever the hell that was on the first one? I mean, it's, it's what, like the 47th minute, 48th minute almost. Yeah. Um, like you're on the edge of halftime and you defend like that and, and find yourself going down, you know, at the, at the 15 minute, I, I just, it's, yeah, I mean that's the losses we've had so far, like whatever. But like that that goal in particular is just it's not it's not okay. It's so bad. It was it was very bad. Yeah, I mean uh, Felipe Sanchez missed the ball several times. Vazinski missed the ball, then falls down. Gantenbaum closes his eyes, misses a header, falls down. Bachman is standing there. It's like, what are you guys doing? Like seriously, what are you guys doing? And Zivzivadze is like, okay, thank you guys. Walked past Vazinski and scored the goal. Uh, so one nothing to half that, and that sucked for sure. Terrible goal to give away. But I'm thinking like, okay, as good as they were in the first half, it was only one nothing. We're all we're within the goal. Uh, so I was like, just clean up your shit. Don't do it again. Play fucking defense, and we're okay. Uh, I come out of the half, literally within like the first minute of the second half, they get a great opportunity, and um, ball comes over the top on a set piece. 
and Schlusner's by himself with a Hecker in one on one, and Hecker makes a fantastic save. This is at this point is probably the fifth big save he had in the game. Probably three on Schlusner at this point. Um, and so yeah, it kept it out there, and we kept this, we kept it at bay for a while until like what the seventy third minute again, where ball goes over the back. No one's playing defense. I think Schlusner takes a shot. It gets past Heckerin. Merkin makes a save on the goal line, but it bounces out. Guys standing around again, and Zizivaz is like, oh, thank you. Let me just tap it in there and goal. It's like, what the fuck? It's not as bad as the first goal, but it's bad. Yeah. Um, and I have to remember from even remembering the play correctly, but like, did, wasn't, it, wasn't a ball put in from wide at the first part of that, right? Because, yeah, I mean, like, so even that play, right? Like, I think it was, it was Hamash defending at that point, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, like, he's. I mean, even watching that, like, the play, they, they got in behind and, and played up off the edge, but it wasn't that poorly defended in general. Like, the back line was was fairly level with their defenders. There's a chance that a ball could have been whipped in, like, right in front of the goalie if, if it was played initially that way, and maybe, you know, it could have obviously been a dangerous shot or something, but I didn't think it was that poorly defended. But, like, Hamach is, is, is on this trailing runner, and he seems to be completely, like, unaware of the possibility that that ball could go to the guy that he's running with as opposed to that sort of like first first wave. He's not trying to get body position on his guy, you know, like, you know, between his man and where the ball would be coming from. He's not really making an effort to stay in front of him. And and ultimately that ball comes to him, waltzes in, gets the shot. And that's what that's what causes it to that. And that's also like from a substitute who has fresh legs, who comes out in the second half like that. Like, that's not good enough for me either on that play. And I have to like, you know, single him out for that. But like, yeah, so not, not a great certainly not as bad of a defensive effort on the second goal as was the case with the first one. Like, I mean, the first goal is just an elite class of, of, of hilarity, but like that second goal um, as, as well as just, it's like, I mean, yeah, I don't know. We, we can talk about, I mean, you, you can talk more about like, you know, their build up and like the ways they were breaking down and kind of getting, getting into those chances in the first place. But like, even just from like a, a structural level, wasn't that terrible. It's just some of these mistakes like individually are just not, not helping us out right now. And so we always say, don't help the opponent beat us. They can beat them, beat, beat, beat us themselves. Like we do, they do not need any help from us. We're helping them gloriously here, unfortunately. A um, couple things for me in this game: Ganton, Bime, and Merck. I mean, the center backs are bad. Well, at least in some some plays, some plays are okay, but you know those are pretty bad plays that they give up for the goals. Ganton, Bime, and Merck are just getting beat constantly down the wings. Um, yeah, I mean, let's talk about that. I mean, like how high their average position of their fullbacks was all game, yeah. like being able to push them like well into our half. And, and like, I mean, Gantabine and Merkin doing, very, I mean, especially Gantabine, but like doing very little to like to, to stop that. Um, and, and like, I think Bachman plays a role in that, you know, to some extent on that side as well. Um, you know, and I know they had some people kind of pushing up and trying to drag those people away from those areas, like to, to kind of isolate them, but still it's not. Yeah, I don't know. Um, far too, particularly in the first half, just far too comfortable uh, in, in in getting into those areas and just like occupying that real estate without you know any attempt to push them out of it. Yeah, and and I, and I think also too, unfortunate for them, both Schallenberg and Bachman looked awful game. Schallenberg didn't look comfortable in his normal position. Uh, I just didn't seem involved at all, and that's unfortunate because the times you pass, we've seen him the six. He's done really well. He's been, you know, making great passes. I thought he was an effective Bachman as well. Um, and then I think as a result of their poor play, my second thing I saw and noticed was, I mean, Yunus, he had some good moments, you know, going to the offensive end, but he would come in way too deep, like near where the, where the goalkeeper was trying to get the ball because, you know, Schallenberg and Bachman weren't doing anything with it. And then trying to carry it all the way up the pitch, and it's not going to happen. Uh, he had some good link-ups eventually with, you know, Karaman and Silla. Uh, but really, the 58 minutes I was in there, too much, too little, or too little, too late. I don't know. This is poor. Yeah, I would agree. And I think that's potentially, you know, one of the issues um, if your midfield looks like it does with Bachman and Schallenberg is neither of those. I mean, maybe Schallenberg a little bit. I mean, and it's funny because like Bachman is the more advanced of those two generally. I think Schallenberg may be the better ball player. I don't even know. It's, yeah, it's tough to yeah. say. I haven't had that many moments of Bachman impressing me with that so far. And he had a couple moments where he had some errant passes of this one that were just like, Ideally, just it's way, just way off angle. Yeah, ideally, it's Segwin and Schellenberg in the middle there. Yeah, so it's like I I can understand like you just doing that given what the personnel was in this game, but I know I know what you're saying. Yeah, but what I'll say is this: like I, I think there were moments where he was better than I expected. Yeah. Um, certainly was able to play some progressive passes 
across decent distances sometimes and find people and keep them from getting intercepted. Uh, he was useful in transition in a couple moments. Like I'm not saying that he there were there were that many moments where he played like a like a perfect ball that was super well timed, you know, through a gap or something to really give us like a great opportunity. Um, but he didn't turn the ball over a ton in those, you know what I mean? Like he, he was he was decent at facilitating, maintaining possession, helping us advance at the pitch. So um yeah, that that was that was okay. I think the question is him being on the pitch in that in that role, in that shape at least, seems to kind of it's pushing Silla out wide. Yeah. And Silla's played there, you know, kind of anyway off the shoulder sometimes, but like the question is like, do you want Scylla more forward or, you know what I mean? Like, or more wide, yeah. I mean, do you want Eunice like behind Scylla as opposed to like, you know, Scylla in like a winger position, that kind of thing. Cause it was a stinker from Caraman. Like, I, I don't know if Eunice changed the way Caraman was playing, the kind of spaces that he was occupying at times and like the role that he had. Cause I thought it was a pretty anonymous game from Caraman relative to what he's done a that's lot a of games shot. so far. I think it's a fair shot because I think it felt like the, the offense is trying to focus themselves through Eunice uh at times like I said he was everywhere he wanted to be it seemed like but unfortunately it was too much for him and did nothing with it I think and then uh yeah it was weird I I would have I would have almost put instead of having Schallenberg in the middle there I would have had Atui Adie in there who came in eventually for Eunice in the 58th started him in there because he could play a Seguin role he he obviously got an assist in the what was the first game or whatever it was um, or second game, whatever whatever game it was, he got an assist, uh, Magdeburg. And uh, that way you could have kept the shape that it normally had and been fine and find a way to, you know, attribute. Maybe Eunice would have been done better staying up more. But, um, yeah, just like at times, like you said, he looked really good, looked like a you know, top-quality player in, in a, playing in a lower league. And other times he looked like, okay, he's disappeared in the game doing nothing. Um, he looked pissed off when he came off at, the, at 58th too. So I mean, here's my question for you, like Andre yeah. Audrey, like I think we've shouted him out repeatedly now. Um, not not for anything super significant, but you know what I mean. Like it seems like every game we're like, hey, you know what? That was a decent cameo from him as far as the cameos went. But we have not seen him start a match yet. Yeah. Is that his age? In the, and we're just thinking like he can't actually contribute at this level given his age over the course of. Oh. I mean, what, what is it? Because he's not he's not that old. He was like what twenty nine. 30? Uh, he's, 31, I think, now. Oh, is he 31? Okay, I mean, like, so, so maybe, but, like, because it seems like they're, they're really only considering bringing him in, in the second half, and there have been times where it's, like, we could use a little bit more of what he brings, like, for more of the match, potentially. So I'm interested in that. Start him but, in the game and let, take him off in the 50th minute, 60th minute, something like that, you know? Right, yeah. Um, um, that would be interesting to see. Um, we're crazy Americans, though. No one, no one listens to us, so. <laughs> yeah. He, the other thing I wanted to ask you um is so I mean, look, we're five matches in now. Mm-hmm. Do you want to? I mean, of those five matches, do you know how many times we've played the same center back pairing? Probably none. I think we've, you know, zero. We've had a different center back pairing in each of the five matches. Like, like I'm sorry, as, and I know there's like injuries and whatever else, but like at some level, like you're not going to be able to be successful that way. No. And, and 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 let's be honest, like it's the defense that's the issue right now. Like in terms of xg, like offensively. We're in the top half of the table, maybe in like maybe in like the top six or something. In terms of expected goals allowed, we're much more to the bottom of the table, and we're underperforming our expected goals allowed too. It's like we're, I mean, we're conceding more than we're supposed to at the moment. I mean, like given that it's that whole thing, I understand that maybe he's like you know looking to maybe he's doing this partially outside of the injuries and stuff to kind of search for answers or whatever. But like at some level, like you have to think the continuity would be helpful potentially, especially it's, given the relative youth. And it's ironic too because. All Garach is preaching is stability in the back and, you know, continuity man. in the back. And yet you haven't done it yet, man. Like, <laughs> you know, and yeah, it's like, look, it, it, it was, it was bad. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to like, not like, you know, let the players off the hook, but at the same time, it's like, these are young players. You know what I mean? So some of them that are like, still like, you know, you're pulling from Argentina. Yeah. Like there's, there's the cultural, the, the cultural differences and everything. You know what I mean? Like, like these are young people in a different country, like different language, you know what I mean? And like, you're rotating people. Like it's it's you're you're not necessarily like putting people in the best possible position. I understand it's like kind of like an every man up thing if you want to like use that mentality, but there's also like realities of play, right? I mean, yeah. And I, I'm gonna shout out uh, our friend uh, Cedric from Shaka Corner on his podcast. He had Kessie, another friend, uh, Koningsblau TV, and they were talking about how like you know you you can do this experimenting defensively in preseason, but once you're in the season, you need to have st- your core guys there. We know Kalash is the main guy you want back there. 
But if Schallenberg, you're going to say, is his partner, keep him in there all the time and then find somebody to pair with him, whether it's Sanchez or whomever. I, agree. I get Seguin's out injured too, and there's a lot of injuries played into all this. But like you said, we haven't had the same back pairing once uh, in the season yeah. uh, for consecutive games. That's And that's a huge reason why we've given up so many goals as we are, you know? Um, so it's it's infuriating. It's infuriating uh, to say the least. And like I said, all our talent is in the attack, unfortunately. Um, we just got to find a way to shut it down defensively as best we can because this is way too many goals we're giving up. And yeah, it's only been two goals, but like we don't score enough goals at times, and it's a lot to it, you know, to try to catch up to. So, yeah. Um, and, and look, I know the first game of the season we get was against Braunschweig, and that you know we know the state that, that team's in generally, but. Even so, it's it's disappointing to be sitting here in the middle of September and be looking at us, you know, in 13th place and trending in the wrong direction. That's not what we were hoping for after last season and certainly not what we were hoping for after, you know, parts of the preseason and um, the start we had against Braunschweig. Yeah, at least in six says, uh, these next two matches are must-wins leading to the Hurtham match. I mean, it might be for Garrard, so we'll get to that in a minute. Um Based on the table, Carlsruhe were temporarily in first place, but then just Dorf won their game big. They still have allowed one goal so far this year. It's pretty crazy. Unbeaten, uh, both of them. Yeah. Uh, we're, we've dropped on the 13th place with Elversburg getting a, a win uh, this weekend. So, yeah, it's not looking good. Um, as far as the game goes, I got nothing really else. I thought the only, thing, only positive I saw in the game was Hecker and like and I can do my four takeaways after the games and I don't, I'm not saying he did good rating, but he was a neutral score because yeah, he had some bad plays, but he has some been great saves as well. That kind of made up makeup for it. He had like some blunders where he lost the ball that was passed back to him or made some silly pass or giveaway. But he some- yeah, there was one that was pretty tight and almost, yeah, yeah. he almost got into yeah. trouble on one of them. He had to yeah, get rid of it out of bounds. I know. Yeah. Yeah. But no, he had some, he had some huge saves and like, it wasn't for him. It would have been six, seven, nothing. I think in that game easily. And they want to have this controversy about, you know, is it is it Hoffman or is it is it Heckard? I mean, Heckard has done everything to keep keep the position for the most part. You know, it hasn't been made huge blunders yet to cost the game. This board, the defense has cost that. They can't do anything about that. Um, yeah, so that's the game. Game's over. Um, next game is uh, against – who was the next game against? I had this in my head. Um, fixtures, here we go. All right, next game is against Darmstadt, and then and then Munster. Uh, Munster has to be a must win. Darmstadt, they just got relegated into the Zweite Liga this year, but they're not as good as they had been in the past. They don't have those two big juggernauts anymore. Uh, so far at the table, both of them are 15th and 16th respectively, both on two points. We got to beat them. We we got to find a way to get a result, and I, and a result I mean win. I don't. I, I'm kind of with Leafs and six. I, I, too early in the season to say we. Must win. I think more it's a must win for Gerrard than it is for Schalke as a whole. Um, we're relatively an okay mid-table place, but not ideal. Not ideal. Yeah, things, I mean, despite some increased noise, I think, over the past week, things are still relatively chill, I feel like. Um, I mean, compared to what, we're, what, what you know, Schalke is capable of producing in terms of noise around, you know, what's going on. Um, we're not in full chaos club mode yet, but I agree. I think, I think a win or, you know, a couple good results would do much to quiet some of the growing anxiety and potential, you know, rift between um, the manager and the squad planning. It's interesting. I, um, we're always encapsulated into our little Schalke bubble and we know what, we and people around the club say, you know, how the team looks and stuff like that. But like, it's just interesting to hear the words of Christian Eichner before the game, because he was talking about how like, you know, Hey, this, this club is actually a lot better than they are. They really should have had seven points now because he, I love how he said, like they kind of got screwed in the Nuremberg game. They really didn't. We, you know, referee kind of screwed us in that one. Uh, so really Shaka should be on seven points and they should be playing a lot better. But yeah, you have the games like the game against Cologne and then the game, this game, you're like, God, at times, it looks like it's a golf in class, right? Uh, and so it's it's frustrating to see these kind of games. We need to figure it out and figure it out quick. We got two games to do it here. Uh, William Crimp says Mueller is very vocal in the net. Um, have not really seen yet from Hecker and curious if that is something that could help the defense. You know, and that's that's a fair point. I think a, a lot of times you look at the defenders or the goalkeeper as the when you don't have that naldo type defender there who's really a marshal back there use the goalkeeper to kind of direct the play right and if you don't have a goalkeeper that's that that vocal and you have a young squad that's not really talking the communication issues can be can be there and so 
uh, makes sense what William's saying. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree. I, I'd let him off the hook a little bit just because, once again, relative, you know, age and lack of experience and whatnot, and sometimes it takes players a little bit to kind of grow into that. Um, although you would imagine if he keeps being partnered with younger center backs, he'll probably feel a little bit more comfortable speaking up and, you know, doing what he needs to. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it was it was definitely helpful last year to have, have a – a keeper that not only was making the kind of saves and stops that, that Muller was making, but Muller was able to to be that presence to some extent, um, you know, despite kind of storming waters around him. And and um, as good as Eckerin's been at times in terms of some of the plays he's made as well, like, yeah, I don't think he's necessarily quite that personality, at least yet, at this, this point in the season. So, um, yeah, we need other people around him to step up and, and provide that. Uh, hundred percent. All right. Um, moving on from the game, uh, there were some injury updates after the match, which will, um, in a better light than what we have been. So, uh, in particular, Thomas Kalash and Emil Hoyland, another guy who's been out injured, they are back training with the team again, and uh, the workload has increased this week. So, hopefully, they're getting closer and closer. I know before the game, uh, Gerard had mentioned that Kalash is still some time away, at least ten days away. Uh, so we'll see if he's ready for this game, uh, this next game. We we need him back there. Not that he's going to solve all the problems, but um, at least have a competent defender back there. <laughs> so uh, that's that's good news, I think. Uh, Hoyland, too. I think Hoyland could bring a lot. I don't know why we didn't see Dunkor in this game, or I don't. Know, maybe we saw him late or something. But um, I don't know why he's not getting more minutes either. Like him and Antuyante, two guys we brought on, haven't seen them really much. Hoffman obviously resigned to the to the backup role so yeah that's the thing about the donker thing too is like we weren't expecting to be as more to even be on the team right now you know what i mean and you specifically brought donker in and then it's just like it's to be as more getting the whole run constant so yeah it's, i don't know it's gonna be our next captain or what <laughs> could be <laughs> all right um interesting thought so obviously we don't have that big of a budget or uh, i think our budget is something like 22 million euros um when you play some of these teams that are a little bit more richer uh, in this division, at least say Cologne, their, their budget's like somewhat 70 million or something crazy. It's like, how do you compete with that? Um, it's not through talent. It's got to be through the minor mentality. It's got to be through grit, positioning, discipline, which we haven't had any of that yet so far. Podcasting. Podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a golfing class. <laughs> uh, but, like, what are your thoughts? Like, we've had five games now. We've seen a little bit of everything. Who is this Schalke? In terms of an identity? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, no no clue. Um, yeah, it, it's tough to stay. I, 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 think, I, think our, I think our defensive instability is also – made it difficult for us to get a consistent platform from which to uh, attack and approach things. So it's harder to even to find the offensive, like because of the result of that, because everything is inter interconnected in some sense. Um, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I mean, and that's, a, you would hope that you'd have a better handle on that by now, but. Yeah. And then, you know, you think a team was as fragile as we are defensively, you'd want to try to possess the ball more so the opposition that have the ball. But we've seen that also this year where like, we had the ball, and then someone counterattacks us, and then they score. So, like, it doesn't matter what we've done this so far this year. Nothing's worked, and Garak's has got to figure something out because uh, time is sticking on him. Um, there's been no identity. You would think by now there's some identity. It is hard because that many people have said, like, a lot of new bodies, right? It's funny because, like, I look at it this way with Schalke, and I'm like, oh, you know, they should figure it out by now. And then on the other hand, I'm like, oh, the commanders are all the hell of a bunch of new players in the NFL. They, i got to give them some time, give them some grace period. I'm like, you know – it's pot calling kettle black. I think, you know, they do need some time to get used to each other and all the new pieces and stuff like that. Again, it's a whole new team. But by this point, they need to figure it out. It's not, you know, I think that grace period, that welcome period is is over with. You got two games now that are excruciatingly crucially important before you get to hurt the um they gotta they gotta get results. Point blank. Yeah, no, I would agree. And, and, and I guess the other thing I would say is, like, I think exploratory phase is over. I think we need to start seeing some consistency in terms of shape and and personnel. And I don't know. Maybe others would disagree. Maybe people like the approach. Um, you know, and maybe Gerard's is going to keep rotating things as he sees fit based on whatever the matchup happens to be. But 
uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's starting to feel like continuity might be a little bit more helpful. And I wonder, his next two topics are roughly about the same thing, uh, and it's it's about Ben Manga and Car Carl Gerards because like now this is build, and you take it as a grain of salt. But what the what he's what Manga is quoted as saying is that uh, it was I guess during the international break. Uh, talking about the lineup choices by Carl Garage. And he says, you know, the coach makes the team lineup, not me. If he thinks that so-and-so is happy to, uh, sh ha should play, then that's how it is. Uh, he has to line up how the way he thinks. Everyone has their own opinion. Me too. If the coach says at the end of the day that Sanchez and Vizinski are not ready yet in his eyes, then we have to respect that. Whether I like it or not, doesn't matter. Should I go to the coach now and tell him to watch out and put this guy in or this guy out? No. So, so far, you're like, okay, that's a fairly standard comment there. Uh, but he continues on. He says, uh, you know, both players that I, you know, Vizinski and Sanchez are players who have played in top leagues in their own countries. Um, he says, um, anyone who's ever been to Argentina knows that it's what games are like there. It's war on the pitch. If a young player like Sanchez uh, has played there, then in my opinion, he should be able to play against Magdeburg, Darmstadt, or whoever. Uh, also, anyone who plays against Boca Juniors is capable of something. All of Argentina top players are moving to big clubs in Europe. Okay, so my two questions are this. One, do you take any stock in that? Whether, like, you know, I think... Cedric and Cassie were saying, like, maybe this is taken out of context. Maybe we're talking about something else, and he kind of said it unbeknownst to him. It wasn't like he was intentionally saying it. Maybe he just said it by accident, you know, and really said nothing, or do you think there's something to it? And then the second thing is, um, well, let's just start there. Let's go there. Well, it's funny that we saw Wisinski and Sanchez as the starting center back pairing in this game. Yeah. Which was, you know, interesting. Uh, but um, do I take stock in that? Like, Kind of, but um, I guess my first rebuttal would be like, okay, if in, I mean, this is probably going to come across as pretty ignorant of, of Argentinian football, but like, if, if that's the stage, if that's the level, why are these people going to this fight to Bundesliga? Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Because they're young and they need to develop. Okay. Okay. Maybe, but like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, why is there that career trajectory happening? If that's if that league is such a destination or such, that, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah I, I don't know, and I, I'm I'm much less concerned about like. I mean, look, what, what, what I agree. Look, okay, if somebody can, if somebody played in you know uh, a River Plate versus Boca Juniors or something match, does that mean that they can handle the pressure of of you know the Veltons Arena? Yeah, probably. I, I would agree with that. Does it mean they're a good football player? No. Like, just because somebody had minutes for a specific team of a certain caliber or something, or against a certain team of a certain caliber, how many people have had minutes for us that have that are not? You know what I mean? Like, it just, yeah. I don't know. I I don't know how to feel about that. But yeah, I'd be interested to hear kind of like what you think the the greater context of those quotes is, and kind of where you fall on what you think the intent of that was. Yeah, I mean, it's one of two things. It, it depends on how, and, and I don't know been mango well at all uh so I, I can't say what his words are but like if he was being asked just in general about the transfer market and then someone asked him oh why is and why are these players that you selected play more i can see how that could just be misconstrued where he's like you know i don't know whether to play i'm not i'm not the coach and that's whatever and, and then you just take the little sample size of what he said and and run with it um or maybe he you know he's looking at it like he doesn't karach is not his guy so maybe he's like look I picked a team. You play the team I pick. If not, it's just as on you, you know, whatever, and it's a way to dig at him. I don't think it's that because I think it would be very unprofessional. Uh, early yeah, on. Defensive thing where it's like, hey, why are we why are we losing these many games? Well, why isn't the coach playing the players that I brought in? Yeah, if, yeah, I understand what you mean. But the coach could be like, I put the players you you brought in. This is why we suck. Yeah, <laughs> both sides. So I, I I'm not gonna take any stock in right now. Um, I mean, the fact that you're hearing about it already now, five games in is disconcerting but i'm not i'm not too i'm more worried about the defense and the players on the pitch at the moment um like you said earlier it's like the coach can only do so much it's the guys on the pitch have to stand up and i think hecker even echoed your comments where he was like look you know the co we don't care who the coach puts out there we, we're all gonna play as hard as we can but like the coach can't do kid the coach is not playing on the pitch we have to be the step one to step up and play hard it's not the coach he just puts us out there and puts us in the best position we have to do the rest of it and that's exactly what we're saying, especially, you know, defensive midfields that's not been up to par so far. Um, and so, like, a lot of people, a lot of fans are grumbling already about Gerrard's. Do you think he can turn it around? Are you still optimistic that his team can turn it around? Are you conf confident that he can he can last? Because I think 
if he doesn't turn it, we don't get a result here against Darmstadt and then Munster. I wouldn't be surprised if they start thinking about getting rid of him. You know. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily know if he's on the hot seat or if if I even feel that he should be yet. I think my issue was that very similar to how I felt last year. I just I still don't think that we have a great squad. And everyone's been hurt. Um, and so it's kind of like I, I don't look at the team and, and say like, "Wow, this team is is massively underperforming." Am I happy we're in thirteenth? No, could we be a little bit higher on the table if you know the, the referee decision here or there, or like something else hadn't gone away? Sure, but like I'm also not looking at this team and saying like, "Wow, if not for Carol Garrard, we would be in fifth place right." Now. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think anyone can like like this is. I mean, Gantabine is not, you know, to, you know, what I'm saying like. There, there's so many people out there right now that it just aren't. I, I don't know that we have a promotion worthy squad. I don't think we did last year. I'm not sure we do now. And and so I think that may need to have us kind of reevaluate our expectations for Caleb Garrard. Optimally, you would like to be able to say, hey, that's a manager who has implemented some sort of discernible identity yeah. at Schalke. And regardless of how successful it is at the moment, it seems. Like it could be the blueprint to success if the squad was improved to some sort of level. You know what I mean? Like, hey, if only we bring in a couple more people here and there, we have the groundwork. This can work. We just need to slightly improve the personnel. I don't feel like we feel that way with with Gerrard's yet either, though. That's the problem. Is like we we need him to establish something, but I also feel like in the meantime, it's hard to blame him too much when I just actually don't think the personnel is that great. Like, I, I don't think thirteenth is that far off of where we are. Yeah. Offensively, we're fine. We're not exciting, though. We're not lighting it up. We're fine so far. We're, we're decent. Defensively, we're pretty bad. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And it's funny because if you look at the games, we've had two bad games, the Karlsruhe game and the, and the Cologne game, obviously the last two games. But I think the, the, the three games prior to that, I thought, obviously, Braunschweig, we looked good. Nuremberg, we were dominant until the red card, and then all of a sudden the game flipped, and so you can't do much about there. But, though, I expect more from a team that goes down. Uh, usually those te- you see like the two teams when they go to red go down to red card. Yeah, against us, people seem to play better when they go down to that. Yeah, Saka yeah. or you play better. <laughs> you know, we, we're, you know. And then Magdeburg, I thought it was okay. You know, considering uh, the team was on our level, um, could have gone better our way as well. But yeah, the, the the two bigger teams so far that we face, they they beat us pretty good. Um, so, all right, I'm I'm still with Gerards. It's just um, he's got to find a way, man, because eventually the excuse is going to run out. He's got to figure out to tighten up the defense. Stop looking up so many goals. I mean, we already had given 11 goals so far this year. Um, Got to do a lot better. I, I think if we can just shut it down defensively and let the attack just do their thing. It's not the greatest attack, but if they could beat a, win us 2-1 games, okay. But can we stop, keep a goal out, or keep a clean sheet? We haven't done it yet. Yeah. We haven't done it yet. So, I don't know. Um, that is all I got, unless you got anything else. No, just the final word would be like, when Gerards came in mid-season – last year and things are going very poorly you understand that it's sort of you have to hit the ground running you have to find a way to try to get results it's about surviving every week you know what i mean to some extent and trying to turn things around um i don't want to still feel like that though when you've had a summer you know what i mean and now you have like you've had time to take a breath and reestablish and go again um it still feels like we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants every match like what's the personnel going to be what's the shape going to be how are we going to try to play um and, and sure injuries have play a role in that but there, there's there's still a little bit too much of that so that that, that would be where i would criticize garage is yeah i do think we need to try to establish a little bit more of an identity yeah. um and hopefully we see that going forward i i agree with that 100 uh william says yeah we did keep a clean sheet in the pokal and funny enough that was our most Best score wise, other than Braunschweig, yeah, we looked very shaky in that in that game against Allen. So <laughs> uh, they could they could have easily, you know, a couple penalties that um, Sanchez almost gave up in that game really could almost could have cost the game. But luckily, the calls went our way. Uh, luckily, no VAR, right? No knock on wood. So uh, all right, cool. Let's wrap this one up. Next game is against Darmstadt. Um, so yeah, hopefully the, they figure it out. Hopefully, get some healthy bodies back. Kalash Segwin back would be immense for us. Uh, get last but a little bit more healthier as well. Uh, and yeah, let's hopefully get something new this week. I don't know, <laughs> Jack. Where can our followers find you on social media? 
At JM Mangan, J M M A N G A N on Twitter. More consistent than Shelka. I like it. Uh, you can follow me at R underscore K H A R M A N. More importantly, follow us at Shalka America all across social media and Twitch and Instagram and Facebook and here on YouTube. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe and like the video. Leave a comment as well. All right. Well, uh, last comment here. Have a great week. William, you as well, sir. Uh, we'll catch you guys soon. And uh, yeah. Look out for the the briefing of the next up next uh, game, and then go from there. So okay. don't look too far ahead for us. <laughs> All right, for Jack, I'm Richard. We'll catch you guys soon. Cool cows.